You guys really want to see me do a review of this thing? Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's the fall of 2020 as I'm filming this and I don't know about you, but I'm getting bombed on the internet for ads for this thing. It's a monocular and I think it's this year's version of the Commando flashlight. Remember one of those from last year? So this device has become to be known in our club as the Magic Monocular. And this review would have appeared sooner, except I have been unable to convince club members that it is in their best interest to buy one of these and give it to me. Now this thing started off at $129, but pretty quickly fell in price within about a month to $59, then $39, then I began to see them for $19.99, and I bought this thing for a little more than 12 bucks. This thing has some amazing claims. I'll go ahead and put these up and let's take a look at these. Features, this telescope was invented by Johns Hopkins University and released on July 1st. The purpose is to study is to achieve magnification at the smallest effective aperture while ensuring the luminous flux and resolution angle of the telescope. This telescope is the first attempt to use nano etching technology, nano array technology, meso porous assembly technology, thin film mosaic technology, and nano optical materials to make the flatness error of the lens reach 10 nanometers. The luminous flux reaches 30 times that of ordinary telescopes with the same diameter. The resolution is 47 times that of ordinary telescopes with the same diameter. Maximum magnification 300 times. Uh, boy. Uh, that's an amazing piece of creative writing. It also goes on to say uh, it has night vision, it has autofocus and a telescope anti-shake system with a special 3D gyroscope. Folks, there, is, there are no batteries in this thing at all. Uh, its performance is even much better than most astronomical telescopes with thousands of dollars. That's the line that got me really interested in this thing. Uh, claims it's made of titanium alloy weighing one pound. And it says it is nitrogen filled. Uh, so, well, well, let's look. This is just too good to be true. Let's go ahead and test this out. Okay, let's go ahead and try the unboxing. Came in this envelope here, fully optical glass telescope. I think that's supposed to be fully coated, perhaps. So let's open this up and see. And got a case wrapped in some cellophane. There it is. And right away, that looks different from the one that was in the ad. Hmm. What we got in here? Some instructions in foreign languages. A cleaning cloth and a strap. Um, boy, right away, I'm seeing some things that concern me. Uh, <laughs> Well, this says near. I'm not sure what near means. Um, this apparently is the, oops, let's move this. This apparently is the focus and this is the zoom. Boy, that zoom travel goes, it's like less than 90 degrees. And this, uh, what? <laughs> Look at that. It, the, the objective lens is here. I mean, this, boy, that's gonna do wonders for your collimation. Oh man. Wow, uh, I'm seeing at least a couple other things here that concern me. Uh, number one, there is no way this thing is uh, 40 millimeters uh, in aperture. It says 10 by 300 X by 40 millimeters, three and a half degrees at 10 X, two degrees at 300 power. There's no way you can't get a two degree field of view at 300 power. Uh, so the, it says it's a 40 millimeter aperture, but th there's no way that's 40 millimeter. This is, uh, this is smaller than a six by 30 finder. Um, the other thing that concerns me is uh, it says it weighs 1.1 pounds. I've seen the figure of 330 grams quoted. There, uh, there's no way that thing weighs anywhere near a pound. Um, hold on a second. I'm gonna stop this video here and I gotta check a couple things out. Okay, so we're back here. Th this is a six by 30 finder. This one's a Takahashi, and it's way bigger than, the, than this 40 millimeter claimed aperture device. Um, let's go ahead and take this picture. You can see 
Um, it's, yeah, it's um, smaller than the 6x30. And uh, using this, this ruler here, it's, it's kind of hard to tell because there's a retaining ring that cuts down in the aperture. It looks like it's about 25 millimeters or so. Yeah, and I also went ahead and weighed it. I have a, a scale I use for bicycle parts in the garage, and I'm weighing it. Let's see, it's 110 grams, so it weighs about a third of what they claim it weighs. Looks like there is an inch and a quarter socket at the bottom. That's good. I can, I can test it out that way. Um, okay, let's see how it performs. So I went ahead and I set this thing up on a tripod looking out the window at this mailbox about 300 feet away. We had an early snowfall this year in New Hampshire and it's only October the 30th but it's already snowing. So the figure on the left shows the magic monocular at the indicated 10 power and you can see it's sort of imparting this odd sepia tone to the image. You can also see some chromatic aberration around the edges. What's interesting is if you go to the maximum magnification, that's the indicated 300x. I did this measurement by holding a ruler up to the screen and just doing sort of a crude calculation. But I see that the, uh, the one on the right is about two and a half times the size of the one on the left. So the actual magnification at the maximum setting is about 25 power if that 10x number is to be believed. It's nowhere near 300 power. Now here's a control on the right side. I took a Canon camera and I put it on the same tripod, same location, with a lens on it and took the same picture. This is a Canon SL1 DSLR with a 75 to 300 f5.6 zoom. That's what I would consider to be modest equipment, but you notice it's a lot sharper and the white balance is correct. So we're back from observing and it's not all that great. Uh, the star test is a mess. Uh, if you defocus a star and instead of a round circle, it turns into an oval, which means it's loaded with astigmatism. There is a ton of false color on it. The moon is just loaded with color. I couldn't split Albireo at any power. 25 millimeter eyepiece in the short tube 80 will split Albireo. Uh, the short tube 80 just walked all over this thing, which you would expect, but keep in mind, this thing was touted as being better than telescopes costing thousands of dollars. And the short tube 80 costs around 150 bucks. I got this red dot finder in here and I briefly did put this generic six by 30 finder in here just to test it out. And again, the six by 30 finder is much better than this thing. Look folks, I don't know what you want me to say. I mean, a year from now, this thing's gonna be forgotten, but it's going to be replaced by something else. Be careful out there with your dollars. Actually, you know, maybe I should get in on the act. I'll do the next one. Yes, folks, it's the Ediscope. That's right, the Ediscope. Spiral wound nanotechnology holds the bad electrons from the center of the tube out towards the outside of the tube where it can't do any damage. Now, unlike other telescopes which have optics in them, for example, refractors have lenses and lenses do all sorts of damage. They introduce spherical aberration. They have chromatic aberration. Well, the Eddy scope doesn't have any of those problems because it has no optics at all. That's right. There's nothing getting in the way between the sky and you. No other telescope on the market has this feature. Now, it's not $99, it's not $59, it's only $19.99. And yes, there is a waiting list because I have to wait until I can mop up some more messes so that I can get access to another one of these things. By the way, you know, like, don't send me any money, right? Like, just don't, don't send money. All right, we had enough fun yet? Okay. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.